This is an instructional video on how to install, log into, set up, and use all the functions in Encyclopedia Britannica. First, students need to log on to their Chromebooks. And in the lower left-hand corner or wherever their launcher may be, they need to click the launcher. Expand that launcher window because you are specifically looking for the web store and click on the web store. And in the search the store field, you're going to type in E-N-C-Y-C-L-O-P-E-D-I-A space B-R and Encyclopedia Britannica should pop up in the list. Now there are two options for Encyclopedia Britannica. We don't want that first option, we want the second option, Britannica School Insights. So then you're going to click on the Add to Chrome blue button and click the Add Extension button. In the upper right hand corner, you will see that the Chrome extension for Encyclopedia School Insights has been added. You can close that window. But unfortunately, if you click on that extension, it won't take you to Encyclopedia Britannica. So what you need to do is open up a new tab and in the URL field type eb.com and hit enter. That takes you to the generic Encyclopedia Britannica page and in the lower right hand corner you'll see a blue bar that says click here for free ad free access to Britannica school. Do you click on that? You'll be taken to a page of elementary middle and high school and you want to click on sign into my Britannica at the top of my page. Click in sign in with Google and of course you're selecting your district Google login credentials. and you will want to select student and continue. And now you know you're logged into Encyclopedia Britannica because you will see My Britannica at the top of your screen. Now we're going to bookmark this page. Britannica School is a very logical name. Make sure you're saving it to your bookmarks bar and click done. Now if your bookmarks are off the bar you click on those two little carrots at the end of the bar and you'll be able to find Britannica School. You're logged into it now, it's all set up, you are ready to go. One of the really nice functions about Britannica School is that there are three separate grade levels, elementary, middle, and high school, but we'll sl select middle school And then we can search for anything. I am searching for Alexander Hamilton and hitting enter. And again, another great function about this resource is the information is leveled out for you. It defaults to level two. Level two means you've heard of Alexander Hamilton. Level one means you have absolutely no background information on Alexander Hamilton, so these articles are very introductory. Level two, again, you've heard of Alexander Hamilton, you just want to know some more about him. Level three is you really have a lot of information on this guy, but you want more in-depth information, more advanced information, you want to dig a little deeper. The images in Encyclopedia Britannica, you have two options, the images to the left, literally millions and millions of images that are free and legal for you to use. So if the images circle on the left hand side of your screen doesn't give you the images you want, then click on the red search for images in ImageQuest. 
And here we have over 207 images that are somehow related to Alexander Hamilton. This works really nicely with Google Classroom, where let's say you have found an image of Alexander Hamilton. There's Google Classroom right there. You can add it to Google Classroom. We click on Alexander Hamilton's picture. And if we click to download, we're given the option to save that picture directly to your Google Drive. Because you're logged on to your Chromebook with your credentials, it's automatically going to save to your drive. And of course, you want to give credit where credit is due, so you want to cite it as well. Currently, we are in ImageQuest, so to get back to our articles, we just click on that tab labeled Middle Search, and we can continue looking at these other resources. Videos, again, free and legal for you to look at or you use. You can put them into a presentation if you'd like. And again, they're leveled out. Introductory, you have some knowledge or advanced knowledge of Alexander Hamilton. Uh, the dictionary is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, there are no results for Alexander Hamilton in any level because he is a person and not a term we need to look up. Magazines. Hundreds of magazine articles related to Alexander Hamilton. But remember, magazines are more periodicals for more current topics. But that's not to say that you're still not going to find information at level one, two, or three about Alexander Hamilt Hamilton in some magazines, such as Cobblestone. Those are more historical magazines. Another great feature about Encyclopedia Britannica is there are vetted websites that are evaluated by Encyclopedia Britannica and again leveled out one, two, or three, and they are credible, reliable websites. Primary sources and ebooks. Uh, it's a more advanced search function, but especially with Alexander Hamilton, he wrote some very significant uh, primary types of texts with a lot of historical significance. So this might be more beneficial for uh, history research or biography research, looking at what these primary sources are. Um, ebooks are not ebooks in the manner that you typically no ebooks like you couldn't check out a fiction book next the year in review uh, these are more uh, probably uh, 21st century related articles. So we have in here uh, articles that are somehow related to Alexander Hamilton that have happened in the, in the past, you know, since the year 2000. Again, once again, leveled out one, two, and three. Anne Hamilton, maybe a descendant of Alexander Hamilton's. Who knows? We'd have to read the article to find out. But certainly the hit Broadway Hamilton is ref re referenced here. By Lynn Manuel Miranda, the writer, composer, and actor, producer of Hamilton. So that would certainly be something you could search for and uh, use in the year in review. And last but not least, I really like this function um, in Encyclopedia Britannica. You can drill down the Lexile. Uh, Lexile is a reading level. And 1700 for a Lexile is really, really, really challenging reading. So if you, 
if you drill down to say a thousand, eight hundred to a thousand, or um, 800 to 1100. It's going to provide articles again at the various levels of a one, two, and three with uh, simpler language. It's definitely easier reading. You can have the text read out loud to you. Also, if English is not your first language, these articles can be translated into another language. Once you're in an article, you would click on the translate icon, which is this globe. And then you have an option to select a language. And let's say your first language is Spanish page is then translated into Spanish. If you would like this to go back to its original English setting, you can simply refresh the page and it goes back to English. Another really nice function built into Encyclopedia Britannica Online. Another function I really like about Encyclopedia Britannica is, let's say you do a Google search for Alexander Hamilton. Let's say you've forgotten about Encyclopedia Britannica. You do a Google search for Alexander Hamilton. On the right-hand side, typically in the knowledge panel, Wikipedia pops up, but now Encyclopedia, Br Encyclopedia Britannica pops up instead of Wikipedia, which Encyclopedia Britannica is definitely a more credible, reliable resource than Wikipedia. So even if you forget about Encyclopedia Britannica, you do a Google search, it's going to take you there at any rate.